everybody. This is Swanee Taylor, high over Cleveland, Ohio, heading for the national air races. It's been 20 years since we announced our first air race, and this one will be the first held since the shooting war began. All roads to the airport are jammed with cars bound for the post-war resumption of this World Series of Aviation. Yes, and they come by air also, thousands of faraway visitors. Our slow motion camera points up the beauty of this four-engine Douglas Skymaster on its glide approach to the Cleveland Municipal Airport. What a thrilling sight. With her engines idling and her flaps down, she floats in with the ease and the grace of a giant swan. However, in just a moment, her wings will drop an approximate 56,000 pound load onto the runway, and you will get a vivid picture of the important part wheels and tires play in this business of aviation. You will see what U.S. Royals are called upon to take with each and every landing, and how superbly they take it. Watch closely for the blistering impact as the pilot burns her on. Wham! That's smoke, you see, not dust. Yet, these U.S. Royals take it and love it. The dual main landing gear tires and the single nose wheel tire must match every other part of the airplane in ruggedness and dependability. Cleveland has turned out en masse and en rubber. And this is just one of the parking lots at the airport. Into the grandstand seating 110,000 have come men, women, and children from all over North America. It's a public star for competitive flying. Here is General Tui Spots, Air Force Chief, glad to be back from the wars. And Fighting Admiral William Bull Halsey, Brigadier General R.K. Ryla, Wright Field, Rear Admiral Louis de Flores, Chief of Naval Research. In person, Corky Kelly. Mmm, cover girl and movie starlet. A group of early birds, men and women who first flew way back before 1960. And Fred G. Crawford, President of the National Air Races, donor of the Thompson Trophy and Cleveland's brightest star in the aeronautical heavens. Benjamin T. Franklin, General Manager of the Air Races. The lineup of the trophies, the Sohio, Bendix, Weatherhead, Halley, and Thompson. The stands are packed with an eager and avid mass of humanity, anxious for the show to start. Aviation people are intensely patriotic, so at all national air races, due reverence is paid our flag. We get underway with the all-important ceremony of flag raising. We're ready for the first event, and here's Commander Barney Capehart, chief announcer at the national air races. It's yours, Barney. Thank you, Swanee Taylor. The first event a demonstration of Navy target drones perfected by Reginald Denny during the war. The officer on the left is flying with both feet on the ground by means of a handheld flight control. He can make these TDDs traveling at 140 miles an hour do anything, even acrobatics. To land the drone, he pops the chute control, automatically killing the engine. He must time the landing against wind and height. Nice going there. It's almost in the hands of the ground crew. Bevo Howard, 1946 aerobatic champ and his Piper Cub inverted, but with plenty of speed left for a roll out while climbing. Now down to really clip the grass and up into another roll. A real smooth exhibition by a great pilot and a great ship. Colonel Mike Murphy, in his Murphy Special, does a real job of demonstrating what is meant in aviation talk by ringing her out. He starts a roll to the right and then snaps into a double roll to the left. Uh-oh, uh-oh, easy, Mike. Nice work, if you want it. Claude King left, operations chief, and John Hoffman coordinator, wait for the Bendix Jet Division winner racing this year from Van Nuys, California. There's the flag, and here's the winner. It's a Lockheed shooting star, averaged 480 miles an hour. Breakfast in Hollywood, lunch in Cleveland, aviation of tomorrow, jet propulsion, and safe landings on U.S. Royals. The winner, Colonel Leon Gray, responds to his ovation from the stands. But there's more to come from California. Early this morning out at Van Nuys, the Bendix Trophy pilots took to the air for the longest point-to-point -point race held since before the war. Flying at an average speed of better than five miles a minute, 
a distance of over 2,000 miles to set New World's distance speed records. A P-51 Mustang whizzes across a finish line, winner of the reciprocating engine class. $10,000 first prize goes to Paul Mance, veteran air racer and Hollywood stunt flyer. Mance's exploits are legendary in aviation, and he consistently finishes in the money. Second place goes to Miss Jackie Cochran, wartime head of the Wasps, the only woman who has finished first, second, and third in the Bendix. She touches up a bit for the benefit of her beaming husband, Floyd Odlum. Paul Mance in the winner's stand acknowledges the cheers of the crowds. Pardon me, Barney K. Park, but here comes the Army C-74, the latest in military transports. Really a weight carrier. Planes get bigger and heavier, yet tire sizes remain at minimum. Thanks to U.S. rubber research and engineering, which produced the modern, lighter, stronger aircraft tire. A platoon marches out under the fuselage of the ship. And down from the belly of the huge craft comes the first of 15 jeeps, which gives a good idea of the carrying capacity of this air giant. Still another feature are the Curtis reversible pitch propellers, which permits the plane to be backed up on the ground. Here the jeeps are lined up. And into the speaker stand we see Miss Margaret Hulbert, winner of the Halley Trophy race for women. $2,500 was first prize with an extra hundred thrown in. Samuel H. Halley, prominent Clevelander, is as happy about it as Margaret. Now the glider pickup demonstration. The Army C-54 tow plane comes in low from the right, snags the nylon tow line, and the loaded glider climbs out smoothly. This is a type glider that took part in the Normandy invasion, carrying 14 fully equipped infantrymen. Here she comes in for a landing like a bat out of the blue. Again, U.S. Royals take a full shock landing. Glider pilots deserve a lot of credit for the way they handle these big motorless craft. This pilot can land him on a dime. How's that? And here's Barney Capehart for the Ohio Trophy Race. They're off to a racehorse start on the 240-mile test around a 30-mile rectangular course. Serious money is involved. $8,000 first prize. And all of those throttles will be bent ahead. The planes are in the back stretch, and here is the finish of the first lap. Bill Ong of Kansas City cuts in on Dale Fulton to take the lead. Zip! That was a P-38. Another P-38 flown by Earl Ortman of Los Angeles. Here comes Charlie Bing, the P-63 Bell Era Cobra. Far down on the fourth leg, we pick up another Era Cobra as the pilot gives her everything she's got. These racers stay low to keep out of the wind and make tight pylon turns. The Sohio Trophy originally was for engines of smaller cubic displacement. Oops, here are Ong and Fulton again, still fighting for the lead, with Kansas City Bill Ong out in front. As I was saying, the Ohio Trophy was for smaller planes. However, today, all racing planes are so powerful that the restrictions had to be lifted. From now on, this great contest will give younger pilots the opportunity to try their racing wings. Well, look at this. Dale Fulton's taken the lead. He is away out in front at the halfway mark. Here is Bill Ong, hanging on to second place. The great air racers of today, in fact, all came up through this Ohio. Uh-oh. Yes, here's Dale Fulton, first to get the checkered flag, the winner. Fulton taxis up after having flown the 240 miles at a speed of better than 352.7 miles an hour, a new course record, almost six miles a minute. Then the usual newspaper photographers, as the crowd waits for him to arrive at the announcer stand to be greeted by Roscoe Turner, the greatest closed course racer in aviation history. After Fulton thanks the audience for its rousing reception, the show continues with... Sammy Mason flying a Stearman PT-17 and trailing a spume of white smoke. Sammy puts on an exhibition of precision acrobatics that thrills seasoned aviators to the core. This is a hammerhead stall. The plane climbs vertically until all flying speed is gone. Then with a hard kick on left rudder, Sammy causes the nose of the plane to drop like a hammer. In order to better appreciate the velvet smoothness of Mason's performance, our slow motion camera shows him doing a loop and a snap roll at the top of the loop. The 
plane is doing about 110 miles airspeed. Yet, he seems to be drifting like a feather on a lazy breeze. Tony LeVere and other old-time acrobatic pilots say that they've never seen such grace and rhythm in the air. We heartily agree, but it's an understatement. Still in slow motion, we see Sammy demonstrate his skill at precision flying. This will be an eight-point slow roll. Let's count them. One. Two. Three. Four. Notice how he comes to a dead stop. Five. Seven, and back on an even keel at eight. And now Sammy taxes in front of the grandstand to take a bow in his little stem. This is the way a sky acrobat acknowledges applause. Take it away, Barney. Get ready for the jets. Okay, watch this. The nation's fastest jets whip by. Here she comes. There she goes. Shooting star is right. Now we have to turn to slow motion to keep the P-80s on the screen. The National Air Race's newest event, the Weatherhead Trophy. Not racing each other, but mauling Father Time. First a swift climb to 10,000 feet, then a terminal dive across the timed mile, holding a 1,000 feet altitude. Sleek, sinister, swift, knifing along at a cool 575 per. Each pass has the timers really on their toes. Aviation riders prepare to record the winner. In person, Lieutenant William J. Riley of California with his plane and crew. He is standing next to A.J. Weatherhead, trophy donor. Lieutenant Riley's average speed was 578 miles per hour. Introducing Tony LeVere and his Lockheed Lightning, America's first twin-engine fighter. Fast as greased icicles, and she climbs like a homesick angel. Up, 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 and over on his back. Then he rolls out to complete the Immelman. But watch this next one. It's a snap roll and a half, and back out. They fly past in slow motion, inverted, and with one prop feathered. You can see what appears to be the right-hand propeller standing still, but actually it's his left or port prop. That's because he's upside down. Tony LeVere is Lockheed's chief experimental test pilot, a job that calls for absolute air mastery, if not wizardry. Watch him roll out of it. Being strictly impartial, Tony feathers the other, the starboard prop, still in slow motion. and oozes her over against the dead engine to inverted position and back out again with magnificent rhythm and precision. To top it off, Tony then climbed for altitude, cut both engines and came in on a dead stick landing. Smack dab on the finish line. Tony LeVere, a very hot pilot, no matter how you take it. Thank you, Swanee. Another air show first, the Thompson Jet Race. Here, the jets race each other. You are witnessing the takeoff of the world's first jet closed course race. And the slow motion camera makes it possible to really see these speedsters in action. Major Gus Lundquist of right field yanks himself into first at the takeoff. Holds her down, accelerates his speed, and heads for pylon number one a teammate right on his tail. Colonel Bassett, Army Operations Cleveland, checks his speed eager beavers. Lundquist is still leading. One of the 94th Squadron jets hangs on to second. Boy, this is really a race. 
Don't let these apparently slow speeds fool you. All known closed car speed records are tumbling before your eyes. It's a great addition to the Thompson Trophy race. Here we catch another jet sizzling by. Here's a real scrap for third, taken at normal camera speed, and another for fourth. Two jets so close they look as one. The flagman tags the winner with the checkerboard, and Lundquist gives the Army victory slow roll. Now he greets his victorious ground crew. He knows he's been in a race. The crowd rests those aching necks. Major Gus Lundquist, a typical Army Air Forces pilot. You mean aviator of the future, don't you, Barney? Let's have a taste of the recent past so that the folks can have a tiny sample of what their bond money bought. Here are 17 B-29 Super Forts with an escort of P-51 fighters off to the left by way of contrast. The Jeep carrying C-74, a thing of beauty etched against the broken overcast. And the Fairchild Packet twin-engine truck horse. A Boeing C-97 Stratocruiser with the twin-deck cabin. The Packet Toes gliders, carries trucks or tanks, can transport 42 airborne infantrymen, be transformed into a hospital plane. Today, the packet is being considered as a flying post office. Now for a dose of paratrooping with skeleton crews, thanks to demobilization. And still to come, the Army Air Forces, then the United States Navy, are glad to give the public these demonstrations of the part aviation played in winning the war. The Cleveland crowd thrills to it as the boys side slip and twist in their shroud lines and settle slowly earthward. Wham! The jumper's on parade and not a limp in the lot. This is a sample of the brand of precision formation flying the AAF put on every day at the races. Seven P-51 slick and shiny. followed by 12 Navy Grumman F-8Fs who matched the Army step by step. And the Marine Corsairs with the situation thoroughly in hand. Now for the great Thompson Speed Classic. 300 miles, men only. Tex Johnson of Bell pouring the coal to get the lead with his Zara Cobra. Right now, it's anyone's race. Oh, brother, this is what they've been waiting for. Here's Tex, first time around and still leading. And chasing him, Tony LeVere. Earl Ortman, third. Here's a real scramble for fifth place. It's still old Tex with dogged Tony hanging on in his acrobatic P-38. Remember, this is the famous Thompson Trophy, the most grueling speed race from which great aviation developments have originated. Fuels, wings, landing gears, engines, and the vitally important rugged aircraft tires. The eagle-eyed flagman set for the winner. And here comes Tex still bending the throttle. No halfway winner, this guy. And there goes Tex dragging 16,000 bucks behind him. Now ready for second place. It's Tony LeVere, finishing just where he did to Turner in 39. All the world loves a winner, and Cleveland is no exception. Here, Tex thanks his mechanics for his victory. There, that's for luck. The United States Marine Corps salutes the flag as it is lowered in the closing ceremonies of the 20th National Air Races. Barney Capehart. And Swanee Taylor. We've had a wonderful time. It's been a grand show.